what's up beautiful people amazing people how are you all doing how are you all doing you guys i hope you all are doing amazingly well you are welcome to another video but before we dive right into it please don't forget to like share subscribe if you haven't already Turn on your notification bell so you'll be notified anytime I upload a new video. And with that being said, let's get into it. So guys, we are going to be talking about an incident that happened a few days ago in Peckham in South London in the UK. But before we dive right into it, I just want to put a huge trigger warning on here. And of course, a disclaimer, just in case this video is somewhat triggering or brings back an unpleasant memories please kindly click off of this video. And also, no bullying or harassment of any sort is supported on this page, just so you know. And lastly, let's be kind to one another, okay? Please be kind to one another. But yeah, let's get into it. So guys, unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to post the video on here. I would love to show you guys the video, but due to the graphic nature of the video, I can't really post it on here. As a matter of fact, a lot of people who have shared the video on TikTok have had their videos taken down. So if I if I mistakenly share the video on here, YouTube is going to flag it immediately. But I have seen the video, so I'm gonna be summarizing what I saw in the video and how it is. So guys, the lady in the video bought some items from Peckham hair and cosmetic shop or store and she decided to return the items I don't know why maybe they are bad or maybe they're broken I have no idea but she decided to return the, the items and was asking for a refund which the shop owner denied her any refunds he refused to refund her her money and in the video you can see that they were arguing back and forth it's quite unclear what they were saying but they were arguing back and forth then the lady went in and grabbed some stuff and wanted to leave with it that was when the shop owner stood at the door he didn't want her to leave even though she insisted on leaving he was pushing her that was when he started laying his hands on her malhandling her pushing her every side, like left to right center he was just pushing and pushing and that was when she started fighting back and he started putting his hands on her even more and up to her neck he had his hands on her neck she was holding a plastic shopping basket which she hit him with and he proceeded to strangle her even more and of course had her hand behind her back and stopping her from leaving and that was when she started screaming for someone to film it and call the police keep recording oh, no, record call the police call the police call the police call the police the shop owner was interviewed and you will not believe what he said. Check this out. Right now, the shop owner has been spoken to by the police. From what I can understand, he's the person that called them here. And we've just seen people outside who are very angry about the footage that's been widely shared online. I'm assuming the police are trying to find out what exactly happened. And so are If you're going to start beating me, then what should, I, what, what should I do? Well, many people are saying that you shouldn't have choked her. No, I didn't. Choking means like, it looks like I am choking her. What do, you, what do you think happened? It's not choking, like I, at the moment my hand was, like one hand was at the back, okay? I was like detaining her. If you could go back in time, yeah. to before this incident, See? would you act exactly the same? No, I won't behave the same. I think I was like, I just want to keep her inside. It, it wasn't an intentional like, it just like get, get around her neck randomly. And if that was your daughter or wife, how would you react? I would react the same way the people are reacting. The same thing is like what the second moment I need to think about being as a man or something like that, I should ask my daughter, what should you have done? Have you done something? The owner of Peckham Hair and Cosmetics says there's no refund policy on the items the unidentified customer wanted to return. After an argument over policy, the 31-year-old woman went to the back of the store to pick up replacement items. And since the video was posted to social media, the video quickly went viral, sparking a lot of angry people to match and protest in front of the shop, holding different signs that says different things. 
and a lot of people are saying that the shop should be closed down due to personal experiences as well but some people are just angry in general due to what black women have been facing and still are facing the injustice towards black women and how black women are treated black women you're here right yeah you know how we usually told of uh, angry black woman angry black woman today i don't know if you ever felt that you needed the permission to be angry but i'm asking you today are you angry yes i can't hear you are you angry yes yes so we have every right to be angry because we're always told that beauty is pain you know oh you know pretty hurts when we look at the system at what black women have been through through the centuries in order to navigate a white supremacist society we have died at the hands of beauty and so when we saw that black when we saw that black woman yesterday with this store owner's hands across her throat that is a reminder to us of the ways in which they symbolically as well as literally hold their hands to our throats they do not want us to breathe whether it's a black man whether it's a black woman they don't want us to breathe because when we can breathe we can imagine, and when we can imagine, we can imagine a system different to this one, where we're giving our money constantly to people who hate us, right? right? right. Even if we think about the products, we keep saying, oh yeah, you know, we should go to black owned stores, and of course we should, but even the actual products, they're giving us fibroids, they're giving us cancer, right? So we have to restructure the whole industry as a whole. Come on! An industry that's taking billions from us every single year, and is system trying to kill us at the same time right so i'm asking you again everybody not just the black women are you angry yes, yes. i can hear you are you angry yes, yes. Good. after today we remain angry we don't run from the anger we use the anger constructively to create a system yes. that will serve us better but this shop this shop can't see us again no. 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 no that this shop no. 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 cannot see us again no they cannot Let me first address the coward. I know you can hear me. Yes. Yes. I know you can hear me. Big man like you. How powerful are you? Since this whole incident happened and the video is going viral, there are lots of other videos coming up of other customers sharing their experiences as well, talking about how they sell damaged goods in the shop. And when you buy it and you try to return it because it's bad, the owner of the shop gets a really aggressive and rude and screams at you, like screams at you. Beckham shop, yeah? Yeah. So, so you came you came in here? Yeah, I came here to buy actually an extension. Okay. Oh, extension. Okay. And because I, I was going to make my hair in one of them shops over there where they make your hair. When I got there and I opened it, I realized that the product was damaged. You know, when I'm just the ponytail one. And I came back to him, he's not even up to 20 minutes, and he was like, I'm not going to uh, take this back. And I was like, I just bought this, and I paid for it, and it's not going to be useful. And he was just very, very abusive. He was like, get out of here, blah, blah, blah. He was actually trying to put his hands on me, really. But then I was I was like, I'm never, and that's why I never came here again after that. It's been months, but I never went into this shop anymore, because I felt like that was just not right. Like, I mean, if you're selling a product and you realize that I just bought it, it's not even up to an hour, and then you refuse to. Wow. change it or even give me my money back so when i saw this online 
that this has happened to someone else. I was just so happy that for the fact that they, I don't know if they're going to show it down. But I mean, I don't want them, I don't think they should show it down. The guy is not really nice. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah, yeah that, that's my that's my experience. Oh, you feel about this situation? Yeah, yeah. So it's better. So it's better. Yeah, you shouldn't get away with it. Yeah, you shouldn't get away with it. Yeah, yeah. Because you do that to her as well. Blow dryers, two blow dryers in Peckham Cosmetic. Yeah, seventy-five pounds each. I bought this blow dryer like on the seventeenth. That's a couple of days ago, yeah? A couple of days ago. Look at the receipt. Yeah, it's not broken. It has manufacturing faults, yeah? And this man, instead of changing it, or uh, he's shouting at me, yeah? And this is Peckham Cosmetic, what we get for black people for purchasing in the shop. Yeah, this is a man that I buy from every day here products. He know me, and this is what he's doing, yeah? Peckham Cosmetic. Yeah? You guys. You guys, like seriously though, what do you guys think of all this? What do you guys think? Because personally, in my opinion, it, like you, you can't be strangling me though. No, that is a no, no. I feel like there are better ways they could have handled the situation instead of, you know, resulting it into violence in my opinion and this is not me applauding what the lady did because of course there was a, there's a better way for her to also handle the situation instead of just going to grab the stuff and wanted to leave with it but there is no backstory there is no amount of backstory that justifies you putting your hands on a woman and becoming abusive to the point where you are you know flinging her up and down left right and center and also choking her choking her like did you guys see the size of that man i'm gonna put a picture on here i'm gonna put the picture on here just so you see the size of that man compared to the woman and he is talking about how oh he's not choking her it doesn't oh it it, it looks like he's choking her but he is not choking her like how <laughs> make that make sense how do you have your hands on someone's neck and you're talking about how you're not choking her, but it looks like you're choking her, but you are not. Make that make sense. But what do you guys think? Because since the whole video went viral, a lot of people have also taken to TikTok, making videos and sharing their opinions as well, which I'm going to be bringing for you guys next. I think by now a lot of us have seen that viral video of the Peckham hair shop and the woman getting attacked. And I've got a few things to say. First things first, the racism in those comments is disgusting. You should be fucking ashamed of yourselves. Especially because half of you are Muslims. Secondly, there is no reason under the fucking sun to justify why a man needs to lay hands on a woman, let alone strangle her and throw her around like that. Did you see the size of that bloke in comparison to the girl? Oh, but she was stealing. Actually, she wasn't. She was trying to get a refund. Get your fucking facts right. The truth is, the backstory doesn't even matter in this situation because no one has a right to strangle anyone, let alone a man strangling a woman. I don't give a shit if he strangled her for 4 seconds, 10 seconds. He shouldn't have fucking strangled her at all. If you've been DV, you know how much that fucking hurts. And like I said before, half of you racist fucks, okay, are Muslims. I don't know what Dean you're acting out here because Dean don't promote that. You should be enraged at the fact that you're seeing a woman being laid hands on like this. But instead you're ruining your akhirah by being racist. Yo, one love people. I hope everyone's good. I just want to get something off my chest quickly without insulting anyone or hurting anyone's feelings. It's about the Peckham hair shop incident. Now, first of all, we all have mothers. And we know what we'd feel like and what we'd react like if we seen a full grown man put his hands around our mother's necks. We all know what we'd react like individually. Second of all, business in the community. As I say, it's a touchy subject and I don't want to in hurt anyone's feelings or insult anyone. Business is a two way thing. You have a product that I want, I want the product and I buy it. And that's the way business goes in the community. So as much as we say we don't want this and that in the community, we do actually want business in the community and we need business in the community. Another thing is, it causes me so much pain to see a full grown man put his hands and squeeze a woman's neck. If someone steals from your shop or anything, and I didn't hear the woman was stealing, but if, I, if someone steals from your shop, there's a certain way to go around things, right? And I mean, there's an etiquette that you have to deal with if people steal from your shop. You can't just go and put your hands on people and choke their necks. So that's another thing. So 
It just pains me to see where we get. And now, when your eyes are open and your ears are open, all you see is these racist upon racist comments. And it's crazy to see how people really think about people. That's a sad thing, how people really think. So not what they're telling you in your face, but how they actually think. I feel that this stuff needs to stop, man. At the end of the day, I love every single culture on the face of this planet. But I never want to see a lady with a man with his big hands around her neck over any incident in any shop, in any time of history, now, then, whenever. So I just had to clear my chest of that. I think we're all the same. We all have mothers. We all know what we'd react like. There's no way on earth, on the face of this earth, that a fully grown man can put his hands around a woman's neck and pull her and drag in any shape or form. We've all had partners, all right. And you know when your partner comes and hits you in your head, do you think you can go and do the same thing back when your woman hits you in the head? You'll be going penitentiary, bro. You'll be behind prison bars quicker than you know it. So I don't want to hear that. Oh, if a woman does this, is it? No. As a man, there's things that you have to stand by, morals and grounds. You cannot be putting your hands around a woman's neck like that and squeezing a wo the life out of a woman. So that's just what I wanted to clear, get past, because I know I'm going to see a whole load more of racist comments today of how people actually feel about people. But it's okay. I can deal. As a person that I am, I can deal with that. But not everyone can deal with that. It's quite sad that we're seeing this in the community. We need more peace, love and unity in the community. And I'm not seeing it at the moment. Blessed Lord. Recently, a woman, a black woman in Peckham was manhandled and practically choked and led violently out of the store um, after trying to obtain a refund for some hair products that she had bought from a store. The point I want to make here is that I didn't know about this and I, I, <laughs> even as a hair care owner, right? But it was a, through a, a black women like social group that I came uh, across this. The video was uh, DM to me and I kind of wish I had not seen that video. And the reason why I'm making this is because it is so common on social media now to just circulate these videos of violence done to black people whether it is choking whether it is shooting whether it is stabbing or something else that is happening and i understand that there is a an incredible need to that we have to some people do not believe what is happening to uh black people and so they need to see it they need to see it happening because they don't believe our words like when we say it and the other thing is that it's important to serve as a witness to the incredible justice and wrongs that happen to uh black people but the other thing is for some of us who are sensitive for some of us who um, feel incredibly triggered or um, can feel in their bodies just a smidgen of that violence happening to that person. It is not healthy for us to just circulate these kinds of videos with violence against um, people, Black people, um, as content, as entertainment, um, and just like flood them into people's like WhatsApp groups or DMs or whatever, thinking that other people want to see that. It is dehumanizing, right? Just in the same way that that violence is dehumanizing to the person who has suffered it, to us to consume that stuff, fight videos, all those things on a regular basis as entertainment or as something that we see and that we scroll by, it is incredibly damaging to our sense of humanity. And I want us to just think about that the next time you accidentally see something. Think about not spreading that or being able to describe the thing that has happened without just sending that willy-nilly to a person in the same way that you would say, oh, look at this person I saw. It's so cute. Or, oh, look at this cat video that I saw. Violent videos are incredibly 
they're they're different and i i'm begging us to please think about that the next time you come across videos like that or you want to you know uh, circulate them we don't want to see that this is a long ass fucking video but i want to add that i went two years without ever seeing the george floyd video because i of course i heard about it i knew everything that happened i didn't want to see it and you know when i saw it I saw it against my will when I was running a seminar for uh, a, a lecturer at my university. And I'm going through the slides and boom, there is a still of this man's um, dead body with the cop. And I let that lecturer know, like, like one, I felt violated as a person. And two, this is irresponsible for you to do um, and not give like a warning or give an option to students to not see this. And that is what I mean about becoming so desensitized to seeing this violence, to seeing death all the time in our media as if it is just another piece of content to prove a point. You don't have to show that in order to explain or to prove the point that you are trying to make. I beg of us to think about the things that we are taking in and how that is impacting our psyche and the psyche of others. Some of us are fucking sensitive and we want to stay that way. Okay, so TikTok has taken down my video and so I just want to clarify something. If somebody comes into your shop and this is about that black woman being strangled by that South Asian man. And she asked for a refund and it was disputed. Then usually the customer is always right, isn't it? That's what they practice in customer services. And that you sort of, you know, uh, give the customer or allow the customer that refund to practice and to promote good customer services. If that doesn't happen, and the customer then goes off to try and allegedly steal the product, then you just go and call the police and get the law involved. Although I know that's not probably a good option, but however, that's what we have to do. There's no need now for you to take matters into your own hands and try attempt to assault your customer, um, attempted murder in terms of trying to strangle your customer. There's no need for you to go to that length in order to um, squabble over a hair product. It's not that deep as young people would say. So you call the law, don't you? Or you practice good customer service in terms of offering that refund so that that customer can come back again. And so it's uh, a race issue because I'm sort of wondering, would you treat other customers who are non-black or like that? Or because some of your comments on there, you were referring to that black woman as an animal and there were lots of negative terminology in terms of jungle and also associating the black community with being thieves. And so that was why it's racist because we know that not every South Asian people that are have, have shops, it's not always legit. I end. Okay, I just want to start off by saying in no way, shape or form should any man be strangling a woman. Like, he should have handled that way better. However, right, this is why I waited a little bit to see the full story. Okay, so you can clearly see she came with one or two packets. I can't really tell, right? Now here you can see that she tried to leave with about 10 packets. So she basically stopped. I feel like us as the black community, we really need to ask ourselves, is it equality that we want or is it privilege that we want? Because equality looks like a foreigner has come to the country, he's built his business, he just doesn't accept the refunds and you as another foreigner, you just allow him to run his business how he wants to and figure out something to do with your hair. Privilege on the other hand looks like kicking up a fuss, stealing things from the store, slapping the security guard as soon as he tries to stop you from stealing throwing the car in his blood clot eye and then telling everyone to protest for your rights which one are we looking for is it privilege or is it equality like us as a black community we really need to start holding our people accountable because it's getting frustrating how we go out and we do some ridiculous stuff and then we turn around and say well you're being racist no this is not a race issue 
this is definitely a criminal issue and no one should be going outside talking about black lives matter black lives no because what you're really trying to say is that black thieves matter in no way shape or form should you now come and be stealing things because they didn't want to give you a refund is this what we're protesting for <laughs> And this is why I feel like this protest just doesn't really make sense to me because essentially we are protesting for the right to steal in peace. We are protesting for the right to walk up to another business, demand that they change up their policies to meet our demands when we want to. This is what we're protesting for. Instead of us to protest over real issues like knife crime, black on black crime, bad housing, and oh my gosh gentrification <laughs> that word always beats me up like instead of us to protest over real things that actually affect our community the one time we're getting up to protest is to protest over the right to steal at the end of the day whether you're black whether you're white whether you're asian whether you're blue whether you're green you can be a black person and still hold another black person accountable so for all the black people coming and saying uh, how why are you not supporting her are you not supporting her no i don't support thieving why in the world would i support me even as a christian why would i support thieving let me repeat he could have handled that way better a guy of that size and stature didn't even need to strangle her like that not even in the slightest however she is not the victim they didn't want to give her a refund which is their legal right to and her response to that is, let me start taking things from the store. If you guys agree with that, this tells me everything. Yeah, the world today is just so backwards. Why are we defending criminals that are robbing the store? So this incident happened in South London. And for some weird reason, protesters gather outside saying you shouldn't have choked a black woman. For obvious reasons, I can't show you the video because it is kind of not really graphic, but it isn't TikTok friend. And for some reason, you got this like actor, actress defending this person. Like if someone's robbing my store, like I'm not going to go defend this person. Like, come on. But even if I witness it, why would I defend this? Like, come on. Like people need to really wake up. I just wanted to talk about the protests in Peckham. Now, I don't know about you lot, but I watched the footage and I don't understand how people could watch that footage and think that girl was in the right whatsoever. So she's stealing something from the shop. My man's waiting by the door to try and prevent her from leaving. And then she starts beating him with a belt and buckle, you know, whooping him. Then he pushes her back in towards the shop and then she swings a basket around my man's melon. Then he tries to strangle her for a few seconds. Granted, that was over excessive. But I don't see how you can take this situation and try to turn it into some sort of racial thing. Because I think anyone in that shopkeeper's position isn't just going to let someone just walk out their shop and steal from them. You get me? Now I'm reading an article that my man is scared to open his business. And he's taking his kids out of school. He's the victim here. It don't make no sense. This society has just got everything twisted. Yeah, she done something wrong. Call it as it is. She's tried to steal. Shopkeeper dealt with it. The shopkeeper should have dealt with it better. But he was getting beaten with a belt and a basket. And in that sort of situation, sometimes people just lose their cool. Yeah, not trying to make excuses for him. But seriously, like, how are we as a society going to move forward when things like this happen and we turn it into something completely different don't get me wrong there are racial issues in our society but if we're going to put the race card on every single thing it's just counterproductive what do you lot think let me know in the comments i think this whole incident at the hair shop in peckham is part of a wider conversation about how brands and businesses and organizations make profit off of black consumers but in reality have no regard for said black consumers despite making money off them Every black woman knows the feeling of entering a black hair shop owned by non-black people to purchase black hair products and just the treatment you get like it's always very off another example on like a less consumerish level is the hostility the black event organizers face like the recesses the dlts the hostility they face when wanting to put on black events 
play black music in spaces and venues that aren't owned by black people those are both like micro quite local examples but even on a wider scale this happens all the time if you remember the tart brand trip that happened a few months ago that had tiktok going crazy art a makeup brand it invited black influencers and content creators onto this trip again it looks fantastic yeah they're championing black creators but in reality they treated those creators horribly it was financially beneficial to have those people present but there was no value for them as black creators that's the thing like most of these brands and businesses they value black consumerism they just don't value black consumers the same way and there is a difference why for me like blackout tuesday was air <laughs> complete air because it was some of these brands that we had to come and drag by the singlet and say say something support us and the thing with that as well is they do that because they know they can get away with it because we'll still show up and we'll still buy the products like this guy puts his greasy fat infested fingers around this lady's neck because he knew he could get away with it so i know it feels like this was just a one-off situation one boss man on the street in peckham but realistically it's indicative of a wider system of brands and businesses who value black consumerism but they don't place value on black consumers and they do that because they know they can and there's no repercussions you know what's really annoying me surrounding all of this um, discourse about what happened at the Peckham hair shop? It's people just being blatantly obtuse, talking about, I don't know why black people shop at these shops anyway. Like, you know how they treat us there, so, you know, it's kind of your business if you shop there. Like, stop being dense because it's really not that simple. Just like many other black people, I strongly dislike that non-black people dominate the black hair and food market, but it's much more deeper than, oh, just stop buying from them or just buy from black business. Let me tell you why. I remember one time I went into a black owned hair shop and it was borderline barren. Like, she had hardly anything in there. Lovely woman, but she had hardly anything in there. And me and my mum were like to her, like, where's all your stock? Like, did you just start up? Like, where's everything? And she just basically spilled the tea on how, like, the wholesale of black hair and food products is still run by non-black people. So when black people want to set up their business, their hair shop business, their market business, whatever it may be, the non-black people dominating the wholesale either won't sell to them, completely blackball them, or just charge them extortionate rates. So then when black people still have the courage to open up said shops and there's hardly anything in there, how is their business meant to flourish when they have don't even have the, the products and the necessities to compete with these other shops? You'll have a black-owned hair shop with hundreds of products in and then a Asian-owned hair shop with thousands of products in. And then they have a black owned hair shop that's selling me out oil for £14 compared to an Asian owned hair shop that's selling it for £10. And another thing is convenience. So like even the land that non-black people want to set up their shops in are often non-black owned as well. So then black owned businesses will often have to go far out or in inconvenient places to own a shop or rent a shop compared to the Asian owned businesses that we can just find straight banging in the market on the high street, wherever. So it's just really not that simple. But even this being said, I really want us to find a way to stop giving these people our money. Like, they're sending their kids to private school and creating generational wealth off of the backs of people that they treat like criminals. Off of the backs of people that they literally assault in their shops. Like, I don't know how we're going to do it, but we have to find a way. Whether we have to start bulk buying our hair products or just literally, no matter how inconvenient it is or even if, you know, it's a little bit more pricier than the other shops, we have to go out of our way to buy from black businesses. Like, we have to find a way to hit them where it hurts, and that is money. Anyway, here are some black owned hair shops that you can buy from. And you can also join this Facebook group that has a list of um, all black owned businesses and hair shops in the UK. Well, well, nice people, my inclusive crew. Let's talk about this incident that's happened in Peckham, where this young black lady was assaulted by the owner, I believe, or person who worked at this shop in Peckham. Now, you can clearly see right now, he in this picture, he has her his hands around her throat, so he was strangling her. Now, when you read it in the newspapers that I've seen so far, it says that, you know, a scuffle um, ensued. And looking at the video, I kept rewinding it, having a look. It looks like he's got his hands around her neck over in that area before, you know, she even hits him with the basket. So they need to really correct that. And what I find even more disgusting is that this woman was arrested for assault, but yet he's in the store. So, of course, uh, people in South London, yes, we're not having it and have decided to protest. And, of course, it says here that, you know, Live, Live in Peckham protest update as angry crowds block roads over the video show um showing what happened 
but why yeah 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 of course black people get um, labeled angry <laughs> in this situation we are rightfully pissed off like what is this so these this is an industry it's the hair shop um that sells obviously black products it was asian owned and in this instance you know you're treating the woman like trash essentially she went in there for a refund and you've refused her a refund and this is how you're handling the paying customer that has been using your stores just like many other black women has been having gone to these stores but as you can see now people are definitely looking to boycott and as they should because why should we be putting money in pockets of people who don't appreciate our, our, our money and our custom? It's absolutely disgusting. There's a lot of other black owned hair shops that um, we can go and uh, use and go and um, give them our custom. And I think we should be doing that. I was having a look on Instagram watching Kelechi's live and she was down there and getting some of the footage of people down there protesting, um, protect, protesting as well as obviously taking part in it, um, which was great to see. But I'm just glad to see that people are really standing up for this because it's just bang out of order. And we've had enough of seeing black women in particular be mistreated. So what do you guys think about this whole situation? Why is Peckham trending all over social media? Now, let me give you the backstory real quick. Now, whilst discussing this case, I have to use the term allegedly. This woman wanted to return some items. However, the store had a no refund policy and then this woman proceeded to stealing other items. Furthermore, she was then confronted by this storekeeper, which she hit with the basket, and then he proceeded to detaining her and even put his hand around her neck as he was detaining her. Now, what's my thoughts? So right now, there's a looting pandemic in the States and in the UK, and you want to be stealing from boss man's shop and you think that there's going to be no consequences. I'm sorry, but I'm not on your team here. You don't go around stealing from boss man's shop and think there's going to be no repercussions for your actions. Now, as for the people protesting outside this man's shop, they are just fake wokies that will support anything black until it's black on black. Once it's black on black, these protesters never come out in droves to protest, but instead will blame the government and saying there's a lack of funding and that youth clubs were closed. That's why crime is going through the roof. Don't even be a hypocrite. Peckham has bigger issues to tackle than this woman who's being detained because she was stealing. When do black people support thieves? Number two, Afro-Caribbeans have been in the UK since the 60s. Even before the 60s, the Caribbeans were in the UK before the Africans. Now, why am I bringing this up, you may ask? Very simple. Afro-Caribbeans should have built their own shops to cater to their own needs. If you're not happy with how boss man's going to do you, build... Afro-Caribbean cosmetic stores to cater to Afro-Caribbean women. That's over 60 years being in the UK and you can't cater to your own needs and you can't build something for your own community. That's embarrassing. However, when someone is doing the work you can't do and is importing all of your cosmetics, your hair, etc., sourcing for the products, bringing it over just to cater to you, you're stealing from your shop and you feel entitled to do so, because it's black beauty in the store anyway, so you should feel entitled to take what you want and he can't say anything. But I'm sure you have a house back home in the Caribbean or in Africa. You have a house for yourself back home or you've been sending money back home. But when it comes to catering for your own needs in the UK, it's too much effort and too much work and you're not trying to do that. Well, anyway, you guys, that is it for the video. Please leave your thoughts and let me know what you think at the comment section below. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe if you haven't already. Turn on your notification bell so you'll be notified anytime I upload a new video. And with that being said, I will see you all in my next one. Stay blessed and much love. Bye.